In Iran, street protests continue following the killing of 22-year-old Masa Amini after her arrest for flouting the country's strict dress codes. In support for the protests, Oscar-winning actress Juliette Pinoche and Abir al-Sahalani, a Swedish MEP, are amongst the latest to cut their hair in public. Hair cutting by Iranian women protesters emerged as a symbol of resistance against the imposition of the hijab. Well, I am pleased to say we're now joined by Iranian-born writer and campaigner Mariam Namazi, who's joining us for more on this story. Mariam, you've described these protests as unprecedented in Iran. Why has this movement spread so quickly? It's definitely unprecedented. I do believe very strongly that this is a woman's revolution that we are watching unfold before our very eyes. Um, it's been going on now for three weeks. Women are leading the protests, but men are very much by their sides. And if you look at the slogans of uh, these protests, they're very human, they're very universal. The main slogan is woman, life, freedom. And I think that's why this has captured the imagination of the world, the courage of women and men standing up to a theocracy and a totalitarian state, really, uh, which for over 40 years has uh, suppressed so many people. Um, but women have been one of its main targets. And as we see uh, today, women are on the front lines of resisting and opposing uh, this regime. Um, and we are seeing those protests beginning to spread uh, worldwide. I actually found myself in the centre of some uh, unrest here in London recently with regards mm. to Iran. So it is interesting to see uh, the way it has spread. Thus, do you think it is getting the attention uh, that these uh, protesters want to see? And should international be governments starting to take, uh, make a response? I think definitely it has spread internationally as well. We've seen the largest protests outside of Iran in support of the, the women's revolution there. And uh, some, uh, a lot, lots of people have been taking note, not as much as we'd like vis-a-vis uh, -vis governments. I think if we look at the British government, for example, the, the Foreign Office issued a statement saying that the Iranian regime should investigate the murder of Massa Amini, who was killed by their own morality police for having a few strands of hair showing outside of her hijab. And um, clearly that's farcical, given the fact that you can't expect a government that is constantly suppressing women and people there to investigate its own crimes. It's like asking the racial apartheid of South Africa to investigate uh, black people killed in their prisons. It's, it's absurd. I think what all governments, the British government needs to do is to really put diplomatic pressure on the Iranian regime. The women and men of Iran are fighting this regime there and then, and they can herald a new dawn, but we do need to have Western governments stop supporting and maintaining and legitimizing the regime. Uh, soon after Mass Amni was killed, for example, the president of Iran, Raisi, who is um, you know, known for his role in the death commission in the 80s, where thousands of political prisoners were killed in the summer of 88. Uh, he was given a visa to go to New York. He was allowed to address the UN General Assembly. This has to stop. And uh, there's a question for Liz Truss, who hasn't seemed to been able to mention Masa Amini's name even once. Uh, I think that's a requirement of any government that considers itself democratic to defend a democratic movement in the face of really a theocracy that, you know, it's time for it to go. Enough is enough. That's what the women of Iran are saying. That's what the people of Iran are saying. The least Western governments uh, can do, not military intervention, not economic sanctions that can harm people, but politically isolate this regime, shut down its embassies, expel its ambassadors. That is the least that can be done in support of this beautiful, wonderful, universal movement that's taking place in Iran that is giving hope across the world. I do want to just add one more thing. If we remember when this Islamic regime came to power over 40 years ago, it has changed the face of the Middle East and North Africa. It has seen the rise of uh, the Islamist fundamentalist movement in the region and across the world, mm. and a corresponding rise of other types of fundamentalism, mm. Christian fundamentalism, Hindu fundamentalism, Buddhist fundamentalism. So really, if this women's revolution succeeds, it will benefit the entire world. And that's why we really need to support it. Uh, Mariam, a, a personal question I wouldn't normally ask, but given the context of the women's revolution you're talking about, uh, I see that you've got 
fairly short hair already. Have you taken part in this uh, protest? I definitely have. And I think I would like to do it again because I think, you know, it is uh, important that we uh, show any any type of support that we can, going to rallies, cutting our hair, uh, you know, um, and and making, uh, keeping this protest and this movement uh, in the public eye. Look, it, it gives a lot of hope to people in Iran who are facing bullets, who are being killed on the streets, who are being disappeared. Their bodies are, uh, you know, young, young, lots of young women and young men, 16 year olds, 14 year olds, 15 year olds, they are being killed on the streets by this regime. So I think mm -hmm. the least that all of us can do is to show our support and solidarity. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, this, you know, women and women cutting their hair, it reminds me of the poem by Pablo Neruda, which says, you know, you can cut our flowers, but you can never stop the spring. And I think what we're seeing is while so many of our wonderful flowers in Iran are being cut down by this regime, as they have for the past 40 years, this spring, this woman's revolution, it's coming. And the more that we support it, the sooner it will come and bring an end to what has been really a very dark period for people in Iran and across the world. Mariam, some very impactful words, a very strong message that you're sending. And, and thank you for sharing that message with us both visually and verbally this evening.